is Aaron McGuire and I am 33. My name is Brian Manning and I'm 29 years of age. Jack McGuire and I'm 29. So I'm Paul Buckley and I'm 26. Before COVID, like 2018 or <laughs> like long before, yeah. Thomas Figueroa in the, in the Cork show in St. Fran Bergier Club. And I won that decision 30 27. My last fight was Paddy's Day in Tenerife. My last fight was December 2023. 12 or 13. Oh, yeah. Fights, maybe? I'd say I'm around maybe 20. 20 fights maybe, 20, no maybe 18, no, somewhere between 18 and 20, that's my guess. I think I'm 19 fights, 19 fights altogether I'm sure, in and around there. That again, because I think I have the answers now to those first three questions. <laughs> One like, of them my, was your name. My name is Jack Moore. <laughs> <laughs> Nine amateur fights, and that was my first pro fight, haven't fought since because of injury, but... Um, 2000, well actually 2007 first, but it was like, uh, like an underground, crazy, like, fight dojo kind of thing that just wasn't really MMA, it was just me and a load of like, men, like grown men just fighting. I don't know if your PDs are John Mitchell leading up, but really I probably started MMA around November 2020. I'd say it was about 10 years ago now, yeah. I was just after 2019, yeah. It was either the very end of 2017 or the very start of 2018. Like it was because I probably started like, you know, yourself two, three days a week and then eventually did more and more. So I think started 2018. Featherweight. I did a few with like bantamweight, super bantamweight as well. Just didn't know how to put weight and stuff like that. So I. I was leaving myself and cut a bit more than I needed to. Middleweight, 185 pounds. So um, day before, day of, doesn't matter. So I'll always stay the same way. I'll probably cut now around 9, 10 pounds maybe. Maybe 12, 10, between 10, 10 12 pounds for, for the, this fight day before. That's a touchy subject because if I'm in a good mood, I'll fight at bantamweight. And if I'm uh, loving the chocolate, I'll, I'll fight at featherweight. So. It's a touchy subject and not much people uh, like me for it. Five or six kg would be what I'd cut. Uh, the rest is just getting all the extra chocolate and cake weight off. That's just normal dieting. For amateur, it was always middleweight same day and I'll do welterweight day before now. Usually I try to be like 86, 87, just cutting like 10 kg. Yeah, oh, every day, uh, multiple times in the day if you're good. Like when you're when you're 16, 17, you can train five times a day if you want. Like, I was actually, I remember what I was doing, I was still boxing at the time, so I was boxing training, and then I was trying to do MMA, I was trying to miss so I was going boxing in the evening, I was on a midday, I was on a jitsu in between, I was on three a day nearly, or one in between, and uh, I, slow, I didn't slow down, I still trained twice a day now, but before I was probably doing too much, I was trying to play catch up because I started so late, I started at 25 years of age, do you know, now I'm 29, so I was trying to catch up with the rest of them. Which I did. <laughs> At the start I was training um, three days a week with MMA and then I was doing um, six other sessions of Jiu Jitsu. I was in the summer season of soccer, I played soccer before and then I just tried to do MMA three days a week to keep fit and then I just did three sessions one week and then I did Jiu Jitsu the following week and then I just kept doing Jiu Jitsu and kept doing MMA and then and I just never went back in soccer. Well, I think it was like probably three or four days a week. And then I slow, because I was still playing rugby at the time. It did feel like I went pretty full on pretty quick, but I think I said probably three, four days. And there was like pretty much almost every day I'd say. No, I actually was, had tunnel vision before I'd even got in there. And yeah, never changed. So I, I was always fighting. Do you know, I, was, I remember, I guess, I was in the school. And, uh, you know, and, in primary school, secondary school, for fighting, but I never got into it. But it's something I always wanted to do, something I always had in mind. I just I was kind of back in the bollocks before, and so I didn't really get going with MMA till later, till, till my mid 20s, you know. But it was something I always liked. I always liked fighting, I was a, a, a knife for fights. No, I just decided on a whim. Just um, did a jiu jitsu competition very soon after I started, just because I was asked that I want to do it, and then did a novice MMA one without even thinking about it, all trying to keep fit for the summer, but uh, yeah, just it escalated 
quite quickly. <laughs> I feel like I always kind of wanted to compete one way or the other, but I didn't know I'd be going pro and I didn't know it would kind of go as far as it did. Training with the other guys in the gym that were pro, like the, I mean, the, the more you kind of train with them, the more you think it'd be possible and stuff. Also then like the, when you fight kind of better amateurs, fight at like kind of a higher level, when you fight like high level amateur, you kind of think, okay, that's the next step, so. I think maybe it would have been 2012 that I actually had my first fight um, off the top of my head, or the end of 2011, so roughly two years. Was your first fight like amateur crazy. fight? It was crazy. I had never seen a cage before, I had never ever witnessed like an event or anything. And pretty much you just do jiu jitsu, went down and did like hit some fight pads in a Thai boxing gym, and then just hopped into a cage. And I got a guillotine, thankfully, I got a standing guillotine in like the first 30 seconds. And then I proceeded to probably hyperventilate for the next like four minutes and feel like I was going to collapse with exhaustion. I think it was like March 22, maybe, so a year and a half, I think. Yeah, a year and a half, bang on. A year and a half, because my first amateur fight at the Nationals. I won one and I lost one. I felt brilliant my first fight. I felt great, I felt fit. Everything went to plan, but then the next day at the Nationals, everything went to shit. <laughs> but it was all a learning curve. It may have meant to the fight I don't know. So you got to lose to, to rise, you know? You need, you need favour. I was training about, I'd say, a year and a half before I made my first amateur fight. Yeah. I don't remember a thing. Um, I remember I was a nervous wreck. I tried to lock myself into the room so Aaron couldn't bring me to the fight. Um, and it was local, so everyone I knew was going to be there. But I don't remember what happened. I just remember it being finished within 90 seconds. And I can't remember how I won. I think it was ground and pound, but I was vomiting after because I was so nervous and um, stressed. Uh, but yeah, it finished quickly, thank God. But I, I have no idea how I got there in the end. I think I started the start of like 2018 and I fought, my first fight was December 2018. First fight I lost, it was a good fight, it was a um, really good opponent. I think that like, I don't know, it's hard to say kind of what went wrong and stuff. I think I actually performed well enough for a debut but he was just, he was very good as well. Enjoyed it, it was still a really good experience, probably the best experience out of any fight I've had. The first one was definitely by far the most nervous because it was like, I think it was like kind of a complete panic at the start. So I think the first round especially got away from me so much. And that was probably a lot down to like just the occasion and kind of panicking a bit, doing stupid stuff. Every fight since then has kind of just been like, not even half as bad. Six. And it took a while, like which isn't that much anymore, but it took a while because there wasn't as much events. There's so many events that you could have two a month. Ten MMA amateur fights. I plan having a hell of a lot more at pro. I think I'm brilliant. I think one of the best amateur careers of all time. <laughs> one of the best amateur careers, two belts, and four title fights in like the space of six months, one three of them. Walking up was fucking Mikey Myers and Jigsaw and Joker. No one else uh, made waves the way made waves in the amateur scene. No. I think 15. I've always been quite happy with my amateur career. The, um, my biggest um, thing looking back at my amateur career was I was very guilty of um, after my first three or four fights I was, I was almost too relaxed. I used to go into fights and not take them very seriously but just get in there for the crack like and uh, I've definitely lost fights for not going for it too much but uh, it, was, it was a good laugh anyway. Were you not number one in UK and Ireland at some stage? I was, yeah. I was number one in UK and Ireland. Featherweight, I think, yeah. And that was a good... I remember when those rankings came out, actually, I was with all my buddies, and they told me that hey, you're actually number one at the moment. That was a good laugh. A nine amateur fights, I think. Yeah, man. Went well, like, it was... Like I said, I think losing the first one was actually almost like the best thing that could happen to me. Because it made me, especially during times of cold when we couldn't train, it kind of made me, like really hungry, really wanting to get back in, train super hard when it was probably hard to be motivated and stuff. And then after that it went really well, only lost one fight after that. And that was in the World Championships and he went down to win it, so it was, I think, went well. I would train the same. I, I wouldn't change, I, I don't think, 
like if you're only going to train when you have a fight booked, you're always going to be in an uphill battle there too. You're going to be trying to get fit as well rather than get better. So I train always throughout the year, even if I am not fighting. So 10, maybe 10 or 11 sessions a week. Would your training differ a lot like when you're just kind of maintaining yeah, or before a yeah, fight? Yeah, maintaining, let's say. I'll probably do six, seven a week maybe, do you know? Six, seven a week, because then I try to dry life a little bit as well, maybe one holiday or go away for a weekend or something. But like I still, oh, my, my, my worst week is probably six sessions in a week. That could be other people's best week ever, do you know? But that's my worst week. Before a fight, um, yeah, probably too much. Loads of training before fights. You need to, if you, if you go in unprepared, it doesn't go well. And I've done it before, I've made the mistake of going in thinking I don't need to train as much and you pay for it. So it's, um, you definitely need to train properly. Not all high intensity, but kind of recovery sessions, drilling sessions, hard sessions, strength conditioning. So all that, all those kind of things, they add up. I try to train just as much when I don't have something coming up. Like, I think I'm actually probably bad for not taking enough breaks and stuff. It changes because I suppose the diet and stuff like that. And I suppose I could be more specific to your opponent, but I try to like, train the same amount whether I have something coming up or not. There's not, there's not much of a difference, I think, especially the level, especially the later amateur fights. The level you're fighting at is not very different at all to amateur. You might have the elbows and stuff, and jump. it's more of a thing where the elbows is kind of it changes the game. Where if you're caught in the blood portion of your eyes and things like that, knees to the head, longer runs, but it's not much of a difference. Pace of it and stuff. Like it's amateur, it's like it's actually probably just tiring because it's like three minutes full on, like you just have to go for it. Whereas like pros, like I think if you fought that same pace, you you gas too quick. So I think like probably just the pacing of it's the main, the main thing. I think. I did my ACL um, in Jiu Jitsu. I was uh, doing a cut knee through pass and my opponent shifted his weight underneath and it just kind of clicked. So I had to get surgery on that. Concussions, I'd say. Concussion. How so, many concussions have you had? Uh, two, two fights. So not in two fights in a row, but to, at my amateur, my amateur career, like two fights where I got concussions involved. But that's not a bad ratio to 10, you know what I mean? <laughs> The other one is a pretty good <laughs> I broke my uh, lower orbital bone in my eye because my younger brother kicked me in the head and actually kneed me in the head. I still have a disc injury in my lower back. Uh, they're probably the two worst ones I've gotten. So you touch you on but your worst injury. Worst injury, <laughs> death my hand, 100%. It's just like, it's just, ah, it's still ongoing. So like hopefully it's, um, sorted by the end of this year. I'd love to fight at least once before the end of this year. Like at the very end of the, the, the pro fight, so like just as I was coming to finish him, he went like this, then I hit like the top of his head, and there's just like hair part of his skull, and I just felt the crunch and move. And I blame Jack as well, because he told me to throw more punches, less elbows, so. That's, <laughs> if I just elbowed him instead, it would be grand. Winning the belts, so there was a, uh, uh, organization called Battle Zone, and I won the, the bantamweight and the featherweight one, and I was I was delighted. Yeah, my favorite fight memory of a couple of them, like there was a, the, the buzz of walking into that wall with the mask and having a face off with him, and then you just Paul walking the saw. But the one that has to stand out for me has to be the double champ. Do you know, becoming the double champ, hammering my opponent 30 27 up and up in his own backyard, up the what was it Derry. And I'll dare you boom me and walking out with Michael Myers, mask on, and then, and then winning that fight and, and getting the two belts around. So that has, to be, that has to be the best fight memory for me. One thing that just came to my mind there now was we were, myself, John Mitchell, and Jack Monaghan, we were all at the same fight card over in Preston and we fought against three lads, local lads in Preston. So we had come over basically to get slaughtered by the local lads in their hometown, but. Uh, uh, we went over and we had a good old weekend with it and um, we all had some great fights um, but it was a good good time at amateur, we all were, had to get a bit of hype and we got it after that, it was great. Pro debut, I loved that, that was, that was probably it I'd say, I think making a pro debut. Except the hand part. Except the hand part, exactly, yeah, but everything else besides that, it, was, it went perfect I think. I think just sussing out my opponent. So just uh, 
at their worst that and I have no shame in exploiting that as well. I'm not this person that I want to beat them at what they're best at doing. This. <laughs> This and wrestling. I'm probably most comfortable with jiu-jitsu. That's because I probably spend the most time doing jiu-jitsu. Now, saying that, I've never actually been in a situation in a fight where my jiu-jitsu has come into it, but I'm waiting, hoping that I get there eventually. I think I'm kind of well-rounded enough. I definitely took the grappling first. My striking has improved a lot since, especially over the last year, because I couldn't really grapple as much. It's hard to say, I think I'm pretty well-rounded, so. Yeah, flexibility. Yeah, I have to eliminate 50% of, of moves because of flexibility. So yeah, it definitely is a, a weak point. No, I think. <laughs> now look, I, th I think everyone has, uh, has a little weaknesses in their game. Mine, I would probably want to be able to kick a bit better, you know, but I still can do a lot, you know, so it's all good. Definitely striking. Striking was definitely where I was least comfortable and less, kind of, I didn't have a natural ability for striking. Uh, so I've had to work a lot on striking in fights now. I've used my striking in fights a lot more recently, so I'm getting there. I think you can always work at everything. I don't think there's anything I'm really, really bad at though. Just everyone's very nice. If you come in as a new member, everyone's going to be like smiling, saying hello. If you're partnering up with someone that's way more experienced than you, they're just going to help you out. They're not going to be like sitting there wondering what you're up to, why are you here and all that. The people. Can't beat the people around here. All very friendly, very approachable, great banter, great uh, competitiveness and great coaches. You know, help me to, to, to rise up in this game. Oh, the atmosphere, the, the camaraderie in the gym, it's, uh, it's a great atmosphere, it's a great place to come in. Um, there's, no, there's no real issues with a lot of members, everyone kind of gets on, they train together, it's very relaxed, it's a good culture and everyone's, everyone trains really hard. Um, so yeah, just the atmosphere of the gym and uh, the team is it's a great place to be training. The people, a lot of people love to crack and stuff. Yeah, like we can still have cracks so we get tough trainings in as well. So. The problem solving, there's so much you can do, there's so much someone can catch you with. There's so many ways to get around someone's skill set. I, I think that's the most interesting part of it. Everything. I just love everything. Every aspect of it. Now, stand up is definitely my favourite part, but I love every part of it. Love the, love the violence of MMA. <laughs> it's been a crucial thing for me in terms of how relaxed it's made me outside of the gym. All aspects of my life, very relaxed. Don't get stressed because I can't imagine that things were way worse than having someone in the gym trying to kind of knock you out or take you down or... Kind of gives you a bit of perspective. Oh, big time, big time. That at the end of the day, it's probably the fights getting the fights in the stuff. To be honest, I, it can be addictive, <laughs> so I... Yeah, I suppose if that's something that you don't want to get full on uh, stuck into, you, you can very much get tunnel vision like I did when I was 16 and said, that's all I'm going to do, I never got a real job again. Nothing I don't like about it. Nothing I don't like about it. I love the entertainment, the fighting, the people, what I've common with. I love a lot. There's nothing, there's nothing that I can't say bad about it. Oh, the constant, constant pain. Mentally and physically. <laughs> it wasn't so bad until this year, but probably the injuries this year. Not just the handover other things that I kind of a bad run, so. Amazing. Perfect. Thanks for in. Yeah, you should be in the <laughs> interview. Thank you, Jack. Oh, that, that was, was very good. That was really awkward. <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> How much would you fuck off, Jack? How was it? Thank God we can edit this stuff, right? <laughs>